Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> I'll do it really nicely. This might not be your friend because it's the sternum, but see how we go. I just don't think the word tattoo really reflects the work that they did and what we're trying to do or trying to bring back today. Mm, someone's got a high pain threshold. Mm. Yeah. You. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I totally. Left. My name's Julia Gray. Julia Mange Al Gray. I'm part Papua New Guinean and part Australian. I'm a dancer, visual artist, and skin marker. That's what I do. I should explain why I prefer to use the word um, marking as opposed to tattooing. So tattooing, it comes from the Samoan and Thaitian word tatau, ta tatau. And so it's basically a, an English westernized way of saying tatau. Marking skin, it's deliberate. It's more than one person walking into a tattoo shop and asking for what they want. There's no time. I'm always on my knees. Oh, so and don't you? So in Papua New Guinea's central province, marking the skin, that whole practice is, is a woman's practice. Men were marked as well, but not as prolifically as women. The main purpose behind the marks were the cultural identifiers, but they also talk about status. Looking at the designs, you would know where that woman was from, who she was connected to. I hand tap and I hand poke. I don't use machines. I don't use lemon thorn, I use steel. So I'll, I'll use tattoo needles. The implement that you use to hold the needle is crude, I would say, like originally they were just l lemon thorns. I'm open to marking anybody, so long as they're open to the, the process and just sort of being open and going with it. I predominantly mark women of Melanesian background. Okay, let's have a look at you. I want to see if it's happened. Go like this. Yeah. And then just bring it to the side here. <gasps> <laughs> the marks need to balance. So it needs to move with them. The marks go hand in hand with our dancing. You really shouldn't separate them. It's so important because if the marks don't move with you, then they just become a stamp. And what you have on your body affects the flow, affects the energy of how you live and how you think and feel about yourself. The practice of marking skin stopped with um, missionaries and colonisation. Like it, it literally, it stopped in its tracks. Grandmothers were marked and then their daughters, not a mark, nothing on their skin. It's like blasphemy if you mark your skin. They changed the way women looked because it didn't fit their aesthetic. And their aesthetic was, well, we all know what it was. It wasn't them. And now it's the struggle of bringing it back. But not bringing it back where it's a replica. It needs to be new old. It cannot be the same. It just can't. Club. We're on the way to um, the village. Today we'll drive in and my auntie um, has organised some ladies that are marked and we'll just have tea with them and yeah it's pretty special. They carry history, they wear it on their skin. This is where we're from so we'll be putting our feet on our land. In old times, young girls were tattooed or were marked. By the time they were married, their marks were finished. The face was the last to be marked. 
or the chest if they'd had children. What they all have in common is marking a transition. That's part of what the work is now for, for Melanesian marks, is really dealing with each woman as they are and talking about what they are transitioning from. And most of the time, most of the time, it's learning to actually accept who they are. There's so many, you know, diverse kind of makeups of who we are today as Pacific women that when you speak to them individually, they all have one thing in common and they ask, am I enough? <laughs> Rough. <laughs> 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 Mm. Does she remember? Do you remember what it felt like when they were doing it? Oh. How old were you when you got your Papua? This one, I was in 24. 24. Very young. And how long did it take? It takes a, a week. Oh. That's Monday. Tuesday, you'll have rest. Wednesday, you'll they'll do this one. Mm. Thursday, you'll have rest. They, uh, Friday. Friday, they'll complete this one. Ah. And so when you danced with your... Yeah. Was it good or...? It was very nice with mm. you. <laughs> the coconut was all yeah. fried. Mm. So I think you're really, really strong. When I look at you and I think that was with thorns, I just... Yeah, amazing. <laughs> 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 Let's do <laughs> do that one, that one, that one, and that one. Yeah, those four lines. Let's get her wrists that it's up like that. The designs come from your what what you're surrounded in. Now that I've been doing this work for a long time, when people say, what does it mean? What does it mean? Everything to me and nothing to you if you can't read this. So I just don't have the patience to sit there and tell you <laughs> what it means. I'm fine. Mm, not much pain. I feel proud about this one. But this one is similar to the one on my ties, mm. which was made traditionally. It, they used, we used uh, charcoal, kerosene, and uh, needle <laughs> for this one to be tattooed. Mm. So that was the first time I got tattooed. Wow. Once upon a time, I'd be running up this hill. But now I've got this buggered up foot. It really is about um, how these marks fortify and allow especially our women to sort of step back up because they've been pushed. It's about empowerment, it's about self-love, all of those things 
and it's about continuing culture, not just preserving it, but maintaining and developing it. Because if you put it in a glass jar and preserve it, it has no purpose to anybody. The reason why our women, why they want these marks again, it's like a really beautiful way of showing resistance, but also reconnecting and stating who they are. It really is a quiet but very visual form of I am who I am and everything that came before me is not only I carry genetically, but I'm visually putting that language on my body as well and for those that can't read what these marks mean that's okay because these marks are not about what other people perceive 